The Jackets lose 4-1 to the Boston Bruins last night, and their race to the playoff becomes a little bit more difficult. We'll talk about their realistic chances at getting back in the playoff today on Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Hayden Heilshorn. Back with me soon will be my co-host, Jay Foster. I'm here to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of your favorite team in ours, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before I get going, I want to say thank you to the Everydayer for making this your first listen every day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms or free here on YouTube and the SiriusXM app. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL or use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase with Game Time. Great ticketing app if you want to catch a game this year. Jackets lose four to one in front of a home crowd at Nationwide last night to the Boston Bruins. Obviously, going into that game. Everybody knew it was going to be a tough game. The, the Bruins are are good. They're tough. They're leading the Atlantic Division right now. One of the best teams in the league. In fact, they're leading the league now after last night's win with 52 points. That is passing the New York Rangers and the Vancouver Canucks, both with 51, and the Avs also at 51. So serious, serious opponent in your building last night. Obviously, the Blue Jackets are a little beaten up, not having guys like Boone Jenner, Zach Grensky, Sean Crowley, Patrick Laine still out. And the game kind of played out exactly the way anybody could have predicted. Blue Jackets kept pace early in that first period. It felt like they were flying around. Actually, you could tell the Jackets weren't uh, tired from their game a couple nights ago in Boston. They're back-to-back games, really. They played two games in 24 hours, really, that was uh, in uh, before the new year. And they got a couple days rest, got to play the Bruins at home. Obviously, Pascal Vincent's message resonated with them because they were flying around early in that first period, I felt like. I felt like Justin Danforth, uh, Jack Roslick, having him back in the lineup, he was flying around. Those two players specifically – we're moving really fast through the neutral zone and into the offensive zone and, and causing a lot of pressure for Linus Hallmark, but Linus Hallmark just played phenomenal, I felt like, in that first period. Jackets actually outshot the Bruins 11-5 to at the end of that first period and thought the Jackets were going to win that win that game because of it. It was a good first period. I, I definitely thought, oh, wow, Columbus can, can steal this one. And the Jackets beat Boston earlier this year. At the end of November, yeah, November 27th, in that just terrible month, the Blue Jackets actually beat them 5-2 to two at home. And it's funny, I was just curious because I was looking at what the all-time series was between the Bruins and the Blue Jackets because there was a time When as a before I was even on this podcast, this would obviously been a few years ago when the Jackets were making playoff runs and kind of in the upper half of the Metro. I would get online and get in, you know, fights, of course, that that was a younger me. okay, so don't judge me, but I would get in fights with people from other teams about the Blue Jackets, because the first thing people would bring up would be the Stanley Cups. Obviously, the Blue Jackets have none as a franchise, but the all-time series record against a lot of teams, Columbus actually had the advantage because of the torts era. And I was just curious where it had gone with Boston now at this point because uh, Boston's 29-17 and 17 overall against the Jackets, so kind of kind of what you'd expect. But I was just curious um, – Boston's won eight of the last nine games. And without that 5-2 win at the end of November, 
it would be uh, ten. It would be nine straight games, nine straight losses to the Boston Bruins. So thank God they beat that. They beat them at the end of November. Otherwise, that streak would go on. But yeah, you know, Boston's just they're a good team. Come on, like we we know who they are. They're every year, year in year out, they are. Stanley Cup is the expectation, and they played that way. They definitely played that way in the second and third period. It was all the Bruins. They got it started with that Kevin Chat and Kirk goal, which uh, okay, they have Kevin Chat and Kirk. I guess he's thirty four. I know he's not the same Kevin Chat and Kirk that was with the was with the the Rangers early in his career, or even the same guy with the um, the Lightning, or even the Ducks. But I mean, he, I guess maybe he is because he scored the first goal to start the game. And I thought that was definitely one Spencer Martin could have had. Kevin Shattenkirk shot it from, I mean, the blue line, essentially. And I, I felt like Spencer Martin could stop that one. Spencer Martin had a lot of good saves. I'm not going to pin the game on him by no means, but definitely felt like there were a couple he could have had. And he's one of the guys that I actually want to talk about later in this show. I want to bring up some of the quotes that the guy said post game and just translate those into what what I think they mean because we can say as much as we as much as we believe that this team still can make the playoffs we got to hear from them the players what do they believe do they still have the confidence that their playoff team is Pascal Vincent's message is his messages still resonating with the team in the locker room. That's what I'm curious of. Who are the leaders in this locker room? Because as we've mentioned, they're they're missing some big, big guys. They're missing some significant players. I thought once they lost Zach Berensky, pretty much all hope on this season was lost. Since then, they beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I definitely think your season's on if you're able to beat a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs. But then again, maybe the Leafs aren't as good as I'm giving them credit for in terms of a matchup perspective. Maybe that's just a team the Jackets match up really well against. And I thought the Jackets matched up well against the Bruins. It's, I mean, again, it seemed like whatever message Pascal Vincent had given the team beforehand was, was resonating because, again, the Jackets outshot the Bruins in that first period, didn't get any goals out of it. And a lot of their shots were from sharp angles, you know, not really, not really tough for Linus Allmark. It wasn't until Ken Johnson got a shot in the second period in the high slot where he was able to to snipe one home. But again, even when that, even on that goal that Ken Johnson scored, a completely broken play, just a play where it seemed like Columbus was trying to do too much offensively. Puck ends up getting back to Ken Johnson's stick in a very lucky spot, a very dangerous spot for a guy like him. It's just simple plays like that. Like, why can't Columbus get the puck to the slot, make those your opportunities instead of rushing offense? Um, Granted, I love when Columbus comes out of the gate with full force attack, great forechecking, you know, incredible speed, which again, I felt like the Jackets absolutely did tonight in that first period. But for a veteran goalie like Linus Hallmark, he's not going to have trouble making saves from, you know, when he's got one shoulder on the post and can just track it the whole way. It doesn't matter how close you can get in front of him. If you're not able to, you know, curate offense in front of him and and open up that goal, then you're not going to do anything. And credit the Bruins. Again, they were just patient, just waited till this game moved on a little bit, waited till they got power play opportunities. Their power play got a goal tonight. And it was from, yeah, just they put bodies in front of the net. I believe it was uh, Jake DeBrusque who redirected a shot in on Spencer Martin. Spencer Martin's not going to see that. That's not something I, that's definitely, that is the one goal I really don't blame him on. I also really don't blame him on the last one too, which was, you know, there's there's three defenders. There's three Blue Jacket players that were in between that pass from, you know, what's-his-face to what's-his-face. Doesn't matter. The Bruins, 
like they're they're a good team. They're a really good team. They have a um they they look like they could be competing for a Stanley Cup again as they did with, you know, back when they had Bruce Casty as their coach. Obviously Bruce Casty has moved on. It's Jim Montgomery who is a guy that again has the Bruins right back at the top of the NHL and they're a very dangerous team. So didn't expect Blue Jackets to win this one, <laughs> to say the very least. I, I thought they could have won this one. But again, I think, if anything, it exposed in the second and third period just how much better of a team the Bruins play by playing simpler hockey. And I'll, and I'll touch more on that here in a second on Locked on Blue Jackets. First, I want to talk to you guys about FanDuel. Well, it's week 18 of the NFL regular season. That means things are starting to wrap up. A lot of fantasy leagues are over. If your fantasy league is really creeping into week 18, then what are you doing? Um, but anyway, if you're out of your fantasy league and you're just looking to have some fun in this NFL week 18, get in on the action with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 money line bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose, on your money line bet. It's an app that is super easy to use. There are many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. It's the best way to find popular parlays and more. It's a very fun app, guys, and Browns fans, hey, this is the time of year where you're not really used to this, you're not really used to having a team this good, and make the experience even more enjoyable with FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Just for years, I feel like the Bruins have been one of the best offensive teams in the league. They've gotten, they've been able to squeeze a lot, I felt like, out of players who don't really come across as that athletic and that good. But when you give them the right time and space and you put them in the right positions to get shots on goal, they're able to succeed. I mean, look at Brad Marchand. Like, he's not a big dude. And yet he's dominated the NHL for a decade plus. Look at a guy like David Pasternak. Like, is he really that much more talented than um, some of his some of his peers? I I don't know. I mean, I'd say so. But again, I think if he's playing for the Ottawa Senators, you know, he doesn't have you know the season that he's having, right? I think it's I think it's about the team play around him equally as as much as it is about him himself and and he didn't even have a goal tonight so I'm talking about a guy like him and he didn't even score tonight but he's a threat he's a threat at any point and and, and him being a threat opens up kind of the lines in the back end which is the, it was the other lines really that got it done for the Bruins tonight it wasn't really their top dogs uh, James Van Van, Reem, Van Reemsdijk, excuse me. James Van Reemsdijk is a is a dude who has you know tore up the league for years as well. Uh, he's a 34 year old who's bounced around a few teams, and he got a goal tonight. He actually had three points in tonight's win over the Blue Jackets. So yeah, I wish I wish the Blue Jackets would be more like them, right? Just just have incredible stud players that they can have off nights. And in fact, their stud players did have off nights. The Johnny Gaudreau, Adam Fantilli, Dan fourth line was all dash three tonight, minus three. And that's not a good look. That, that just shows that, you know, it's not really the other guys filling in, you know, you can't really blame Brendan Gaunt, which I think is what, where we all go. We all want to say, hey, you know, that's that's a guy who's played seven games for the Jackets this year. And he's definitely filling in for a guy like Boone Jenner. Or not filling in for Boone Jenner, but he's getting his opportunity because you're missing a center 
And, you know, I'm not really going to blame. I'm not going to really say that Brendan Gauntz is the reason why they lost to the Bruins tonight. I thought he played fine. And, in fact, if you look at what Gauntz has done in seven games, he's got three points and he has a plus minus of zero. Um, tonight, his plus minus, I'm looking to pull that up. Probably, probably not as bad, obviously, because he wasn't playing with – Fantilli and Johnny Gaudreau, and those guys are minus three. Yeah, Brandon Gauntz was uh, – he was his plus minus was zero tonight. He had two shots on goal, and that's that's really – he had two hits too, you know. So he was doing something out there. He wasn't getting beat the way the other guys were. So it's not really his fault. I think the defenseman had some major breakdowns tonight. If you look at Jake Bean, I thought this was one of his worst games for sure, for sure. He was minus three. That's that's tough. David Juracek, he was minus two. Tough for those young defensemen, definitely. It, it can be tough because the Boston Bruins are gonna they're gonna come after you again and again and again. And there's no room for mistakes. In fact, I think this game could have easily been a five-one loss when Jake Bean kind of fumbled one in the corner and Spencer Martin was able to bail him out on the Bruins opportunity falling. But yeah, I I think this was a game Blue Jackets can definitely learn from in terms of how to play better offense, just how to play more simple offense. Feels like the Blue Jackets are still trying too hard. Feels like they they again tons of great solo efforts tonight, but why can't this team play like a team? I I don't know. I don't know. I know it is something though that Pascal Vincent is definitely trying to work on. And I'll explain that next on Locked on Blue Jackets. Well, the weather's getting colder, so it's definitely a good time to buy a ticket to a hockey game. I mean, if it's going to be cold, you might as well be cold indoors. Go to a Blue Jackets game this year, this January. They're coming up uh, Saturday. They're playing the Wild. At home, that's a winnable game, and it's a it's a weekend game. And I would encourage you to look at Game Time. It's a very simple, easy app to use. It is an app that definitely doesn't frustrate me the way that other ticketing apps have when I'm trying to buy tickets. It's it's a super easy app. It, you know, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is fast and an easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They have killer last-minute deals. They have all-in prices. They have views from your seat. They have the best price guaranteed. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Uh, I like their last-minute tickets. I love their flash deals. I love their zone deals where you pick the section, they pick the seat. It's, again, a, a super easy way to find and buy tickets for any kind of event in your area. Views from your seat, lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection. It's just, it's a great app to use. And as the weather gets colder, you know, take somebody, take a friend, take a date out to event an event uh, indoors. It's just a great place to go for, you know, a theater event, comedy event, uh, sporting event, anything that you can think of. Game time probably has it. So again, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use code L O C K E D O N for twenty bucks off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Just wrapping up. Final thoughts on this 4-1 loss to the Bruins. Tough one, obviously. Not one that I expected them to win. Uh, the One that they could have won. They definitely could have won this game. There's no doubt about it. They beat the Bruins earlier this year, 5-2 at home. I know that was different. You had different players back then. I mean, you had, I, mean I, I assume that's when Patrick Laine was healthy, when Zach Rensky was obviously healthy, when Boone Jenner was healthy. Those are three huge players that you didn't have in your lineup. And uh, Ivan, uh, Ivan Provorov was asked about that after the game by uh, Aaron Portsline. He asked them, you know, not having Jenner, Crowley, Rensky, did, did not having those guys catch up to you? 
He said, quote, obviously those guys are a big part of our team. There's great players here and everyone should step up. So he, he's you know not really making that an excuse. And I, and I felt like, again, I felt like Columbus, based off how they played in that first period, if they could have brought that same effort to the second and third period and if they would have cashed in on a couple more of their opportunities, then they definitely would have won this game. They definitely could have won this game. Pro Rob touched on that a little bit. He just said bluntly, you know, Boston was able to take advantage of their opportunities and we weren't. I felt like it was that simple. I felt like Columbus, it's it's still a good sign that they were able to create opportunities. Still very concerning that they're not able to cash in on those opportunities. Um, and again, maybe they could have done a better job creating better opportunities. Like I feel like if you watch that first period back, a lot of their shots on goal were from some were from some sharp angled shots, not really high percentage scoring sh- like like areas. Like they weren't finding shots from the slot, which when they did get Ken Johnson with some open ice, they were able to you know they were able to score. Which is like how what can they do to get more offense in that area? I, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what the answer is on that. I, I definitely think having Boone Jenner back would help. I definitely think having Patrick Line back would help. But again, they don't have those guys. So they're gonna have to figure out how to do it without. And yeah, I think I think Pascal Vincent's on the case. I think he is. I mean, and I was listening to his post game a little bit, and Pascal said that they talked about the culture the morning before that game. They they talked about the culture of a team like the Boston Bruins and how they are able to play such great hockey. Pascal referenced that it's a lot of strong one-on-one efforts. Look at the Brandon Carlo hit on Igor Chinikov, which I definitely thought could have been interference in that first period. Uh, Igor Chinikov is screaming up the far left-wing boards. Brandon Carlo is, is kind of battling with him with a loose puck along the boards. Igor is clearly trying to get the puck that is scraping down the boards and into the Boston Bruins zone. Carlo, who's six foot six, a lot bigger dude than Igor Chinikov, who stands at just 5'11", just, uh, he takes him out. He takes him out and and Igor Chinikov is hurt. I believe he walked down the tunnel. He he came back in the game, so that's good. Not, Not a long-term injury there for Chinikov, which is a good sign because he's been one of your hotter players this year. Definitely, as Jay has mentioned before, probably your most improved player on the year. And I thought that could have absolutely been a penalty. I thought that absolutely could have been an interference call. I'm, I'm okay that they didn't call it, but, you know, and I didn't expect them to call it because the Blue Jackets, listen, I don't expect the Blue Jackets to get breaks from the refs. And I'm not even saying it would have mattered had they gotten the interference call. The power play still has not been the best this year by no means. Um, and yeah, I just, I, you know, that that's a good example, though. What Brandon Carlo was able to do to slow down Igor Chinikov, who is one of the Blue Jackets' better players. And it was just a simple play where he just finishes a check along the boards and, and takes him out. And I'd like to see more of that from the Blue Jackets. I mean, I mean, if it's probably if you flip it, if you reverse it, if that's Erica Branson putting a hit on Jake DeBrusque, you know, say that probably gets called for interference because it's just that the referees they have this bias. There's no doubt that the referees have this bias when they see a team like the Blue Jackets on the ice with the team like the Bruins. Just the jerseys, the logos, those things definitely form a little bit of bias but you don't know unless you try i'd like to see the blue jackets get a little more aggressive on d but yeah that's a good example there brandon carlo a a fantastic player for this team yeah for the bruins who has been there he's 27 years old i believe he was drafted by the bruins in the second round back in 2015 yes so he's he's been with them his entire career and he's obviously one of the more underrated defensemen of that team. Uh, he's probably maybe their best defenseman too, honestly. He's he's very good and made a very good play there that, again, I thought should have been called for a penalty.
But again, back to the post game, Pascal Vincent reference that Boston is good on the one on ones. They they make simple plays. It was it was simple plays tonight. Not not very complicated. They were able to cash in on that last goal, which was a two on three. There were three Blue Jackets back checking, trying to get back, and yet somehow that pass gets all the way across the ice and in the back of the net with five minutes left to play, five minutes and four minutes and change left to play in that third period. But that made it a four one game. It was definitely over by then. And Pascal said that they just don't force things like Boston. They didn't. I mean, you were watching the same game. They just nothing was being forced. It all came naturally. They were able to be patient and just kind of just let Linus Allmark wait out this team. Just just make those simple saves on those guys in the first period. Um, flush out the Blue Jackets offense to, to the sides. And that worked for him. Blue Jackets could definitely take something from that, and they, they're going to have an opportunity against a team like the Philadelphia Flyers who are tanking, not tanking, I, I should say they're tanking, but they're definitely falling down the NHL uh, standings from where they started. The Flyers were at one point one of the better teams in the Metro. They have now lost three in a row. And they, they still have that first wild card spot in the Eastern Conference, but the Jackets, the Jackets are 11 points behind the Flyers, 10 points now behind the Capitals in the wild card. I still think your goal of cutting the wild card points race down to five points. If you can still, you have the whole month of January still. That was just the first game that went by. So it's no no need to hit the panic button, hit the eject button, really. I mean, the panic button has been hammered since, really, since 2004 as a Blue Jackets fan for me. But no reason to hit the eject button again yet. Um, I say again because during that nine-game losing streak this year, I was hitting the eject button on the season. Obviously, it was too early to do that. I mean, come on. It was too early. There's still, there's still time for them to claw back and and get back in this thing but that being said it is starting to get later and later uh quicker and if they don't beat the flyers on the road and and this becomes you know they they go one and six in their last seven games or whatever yeah the blue jackets are in the last uh six games they have just one win and if that becomes another loss on Thursday night, then yeah, I think I think we can probably pack the bags on this season because if you can't beat the Flyers, who are who are losing, they've lost three in a row. I know they're a tough team. I know you haven't beaten them this year. They've lost in two outings against the Flyers. They lost uh, at the beginning of the season, obviously on opening night, four to two, and then they lost in the middle of November. To end, it was the last loss of that nine-game losing streak. Actually, on November nineteenth, they lost to the Flyers five to two. If you can't, if you can't overcome those two wins, and, and and you make it a third straight loss to the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, I mean, I'm I I can safely say the eject button on this season is safe. And speaking of which, the Blue Jackets are actually eleven points away from last place in the NHL held by the San Jose Sharks. Um, so that's attainable. <laughs> the new goal becomes cutting that lead that the Sharks have on you for last place down to five for me personally. If you're not able to beat the Flyers on Thursday night, I'm done with this season. Um, and again, not a lot of it. A lot of it, it really isn't the Blue Jackets fault, you know. They're a young team, and uh, I was watching the Sabres game the other night, obviously, as I always do. This time, though, it was with family because it was still around the holidays. We, we had family over doing a little Christmas with my dad's side of the family. And my uncle walks in the room with the Sabres and Jackets on TV, and he's a Red Wings fan. He says, oh, is there any professional hockey on tonight? And I'm like, oh, come on, dude. That – that's cheap. It's not fair. It's not really unexpected. You know, ever since I was a kid, my Uncle Steve would bully me for being a Jackets fan. He called him the Crappets, which hurt. It hurt, uh, definitely. But it only fueled the fire, right? It only fueled the fire for me as a Blue Jackets fan. Like, come on. 
like win something. And here we are 20 years later and they have one playoff series win. Maybe, maybe one and a half if you count that one against the Leafs, but I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. It's the Leafs. Everybody beats the Leafs. All right. That's all we have for you today on this one. Tomorrow we will be talking about the Flyers game. Yeah, we'll be just previewing that. Jay will be back and it'll all be good. It is a must-win game. I'm gonna I'm gonna label that one that for the Blue Jackets. That's a must-win game. As always, uh, thank you for listening to today's episode. Tomorrow, as we as I said, we'll be talking about the Flyers game, which takes place Thursday night in Philadelphia. Um, thank you to the everydayers for making this your first listen every day. If you want to follow along with me on Twitter, I am there at HaydenH971. Jay is on Twitter at underscore J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. And the show is on there at LO underscore Blue Jackets. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please direct those to us at LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. Thank you once again for listening. And until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.